Hi, welcome to the Shuko Math Lab and uh, AP Calculus the series. And uh, this is our second lecture. And uh, so before we start, let's do a brief review and uh, what we stopped at our first lecture. So our first lecture, we finished the limited exist definitions, all right? So basically, this is a kind of a quick review and a refresh of what we did on the first lectures here. So the limited definition. So we said, uh, you know, it's very easy definition. We say if a limit x approach to a from the right hand side, f of x, if this limit equal to the limit x approach to a, from the left hand side, and uh, both of this limit equal to L, then we can conclude. Uh, okay, so limit x approach to A, F of x equal to L, and uh, limit exists. So the opposite one, you can think if limit is not exist, that means the probably, you know, you know, one situation is just like a reverse up here. The limit approach to right is a limit, does not equal to the limit approach to left, right? So another situation here is like when you approach and you will probably will get the limit into the infinity. That's why we talk about uh, is the asymptotes here. So what's that mean? That means instead of lay approach to a number L, so in here, if I said the limit x approach to a, f of x, and uh, instead of this is exist a number, so in here we say this is equal to the infinity. Or you can say it's the approach to the negative infinity here, okay? So you can say the limit x approach to a and uh, f of x equal to the negative infinity. So basically, what they tell you is like uh, in here, okay, so if this is the x, if this is the a, right? So when uh, when I have a functions here, limit the approach to a from the, you know, the if you here from the right-hand side, okay? So then this limit the approach to infinity. So, and we know, for here, the x equal to a, what is this? This is what we call this, the vertical asymptote here, okay? So a vertical asymptote here, so that will be one of the situation when limit approach to this number and the limit does not exist, right? So it's infinity or negative infinity. So for the asymptotes here, we have a several situation, but we all call that is asymptote. So for the first one, it's like this. If you have A, like this one here, and then if you approach this way, okay, then this is, we call this X equal to A is equal to the asymptote, or you can do the same way here, if this is the A here, okay, so maybe I put this one here, this is the A, and then it's, uh, you know, if you approach from this way, so this is also the asymptote, and uh, then you can do is like one side, uh, so like you can talk like this, uh, okay, so if this is the A here, and if you have a function, go like this way and this way, right? So it's one end approach to positive and one end approach to negative. So all these situations here, the x equal to a is the vertical asymptote. So we just need to be careful. So if you approach to an asymptote, then the limit does not exist. So let's go to our worksheets and uh, let's uh, try to uh, take a look at some of the problems here, okay? All right, so let's, uh, you know, continue. So from the worksheets, this is going to be the problem number six here. Okay, so for this one here, so we know for fractions, right? 
So if for fractions here, if the denominator getting closer and closer to zero, and uh, if your numerator is some type of the constant, then this is here will be, you know, approaching to the infinity. Of course, if C is a negative number, you're going to approach to negative infinities here, right? So is it so when the denominator getting smaller and smaller, then I know the value of this function going to get bigger and bigger. Okay, now let's take a look at this one here. So let's take a look at the first problems. This one is easy. Say, so let's say the x approach to five from the right hand side. So what's that mean? That means x is always a little bit bigger than five. So x minus five will be what? And uh, will be kind of very, very close to zero, but uh, it's from the right hand side. It's very, very close to zero. That means it's always a little bit positive, right? So the, then the top here will approach, you know, will approach to six. So what is this number going to be? This is going to be approached to the infinity. So the same way is here. For these numbers here, this is x approach to five from the left hand side. That means uh, x is always a little less than five. So x minus five, so it's always a little less than zero. It's always a little negative here. So this one's here, I kind of use this notation. It will be a little bit less than zero. So right now, in the same way, the numerator still is what? Still is a six. So what is this approaching to? Because, you know, I have a, this is because it's approaching to the zero from the negative. So that's why I will have negative infinity. Okay. All right. So the same things here. Let's take a look. Uh, um, like uh, we can do some other problem. Okay. Let's take a look at the limited part E here. So this one C and the D will be pretty easy. And uh, I think the, if you watch the video, you can give a try. You should be able to get the answer. Okay, now the limit of natural log uh, square root of x. So this one is approaching to one from the right hand side. So because it is approaching one from the right hand side, so I know square root of x also going to approach to one but going to be a little bit bigger than one, right? So this one is a little bit bigger than one, minus one. So what is this thing going to be? Will be natural log zero. I like, like a, put a, a positive sign here. That means, uh, you know, that this will going to approach to zero from the right-hand side, right? So now if you take a look, we all know what is the, natural log function, this is what is my natural log function, right? So this is natural log. So when you approach the natural log from the right hand side here, so what is this function that you're going to approach into? Ha, ah, this is going to approach into what? Negative infinity, right? Because take a look. So when they're approaching to, so you're going to go down here, right? All right. Okay, so now let's take a look at another one here. So the another problem here is this one. So let's take a look at natural log of sine x. All right. So we all know this is the sine x graph. Okay. So this one here is approaching to zero from the right hand side. That means that I'm approaching this way, right, for the sign. So when the sign, that means the sign go to this way. So that means the sine x going to approach into zero, but from what? From the positive side, right? So that means it's always a little bit bigger than zero. So now this things here going to be, so will be the natural log of what, zero, like a, approaching to zero from the positive sign. So what is the answer? It's negative infinity here. All right. So that is the, what, you know, you could have the, you know, the infinity because when you approach to, you know, the numbers here. Okay. All okay. right. Now let's take a look at one more. Then for the remaining one, you know, if you watch this video, you can 
you know, treat as a homework and go to uh, practice to see you be able to get the answer or not. Okay. Okay. So now let's take a look at this one. Right. So part J is here. So for the part J, so this is one of x minus natural log x. Okay. So let's take a look at what happened to here. So when x approach to zero, right, from the right-hand side, so this means is, this is one kind of approaching to zero from the right-hand side. So we know what is this number going to become to, this going to become to the infinity, all right? Then minus, okay, so the natural log x, when the x approaching to zero from the right-hand side, right, so that means this is approaching to zero from the right-hand side. So what is this one will be equal to? Ah, oh, we know from the graph here is negative infinity. So this whole thing is natural log x going to be to the negative infinity. So I have the infinity plus infinity. So what is the final answer? I know the infinity plus infinity will be what? Will be infinity, okay? So if you get the answer is infinity minus infinity, then we cannot determine, you know, what is the true limit. We need to learn some more uh, skills later here. But uh, fortunately for this problem, infinity plus infinity. So we know the limits for this one is infinity here. Okay, now our next topic, so let's going to take some limit law. And uh, so let's go back to our note again, okay? Okay, now let's take a look at some basic uh, limit laws. Those laws are very um, intuitively kind of make sense. You know, it's very similar like the what is the typical algebra number laws here, right? So let's take a look at the first ones here. All right, so here is will just be limit x approach to a. And if you have two functions, so you can do f uh, x plus or minus gx, right? So you can either plus or minus. Then this one, you can be separate like x approaching to a, f of x plus or minus limit x approach to a, gx. So basically you can add the function together first, then take the limit or take the limit first and then add them together. Okay, so the second one is also will be pretty trivial. So here will be limit x approach to a. If you have two functions, if you multiply two functions, then this one will be, you can do the limit first, then multiply them, okay? So it is very similar like our algebra, you know, the, algebra rules, right? So this is gx. Okay, so the number three, as you can imagine, what will be? Ah, will be the fractions, right? So be fraction here. So this one, you can say, will be the limit x approaching to a, f of x, and the limit x approaching to a, g of x. Okay, of course in here, I would, so the gx. Okay, so of course in here, we need to, so we assume the limit x approach to a, the gx cannot be equal to zero, right? Okay, so now the number four here is, if the limit x approach to a, if you times the constant, all right, so now I'm going to use the color red as my constant. Okay, so if this is your times a constant, then this one will be equal to, you can take the constant out, and then this will be limit x approach to a f of x. Okay, and now the next one here is, uh, you know, if the limit x to approach to a, if you have a function f of x, the nth power, and then you can say, you know, you can take the limit first, 
then the whole thing you can end power. Okay, so the same thing is here. If you take the roots here, so if this is f of x, if this is nth root, right? So this will be similar. You can take the limit first. So this is limit x approaching to a, f of x, then you do nth root. Okay, of course, in here, you know, if n is an even number like a square root, then of course you need to, okay, so the limit, uh, and x approach to a the f of x has to be greater than equal to zero, right? So when the n is an even number, correct? All right, so that is the pretty obvious. So number seven is here. This one is probably, you know, some students sometimes get confused. So if the limit approach to a from a constant, right? So that means it's a constant. Then the answer will just be a constant. All right. So let is, uh, uh, you know, the, because I don't have x, so the constant is a constant. All right. Now, these are the basic uh, limit law. So let's go to our worksheet to find a couple practice problems and uh, to see, you know, how to apply the, those uh, basic limit laws here. Okay. Okay, so this will be the problem number seven in our worksheets. So let's take a look at a few very, those are very straightforward. So like a limit x approaching to two f of x plus five gx. So based on the limit law, I said this one will be equal to limit x approaching to two f of x plus five times the limit x approaching to 2 gx, so, right? So I can take this constant, constant outside the limit. So what is a f of x? It's a 4 plus 5 times negative 2. So this will be negative 6, All right? So it's pretty straightforward. OK, so now let's take a look at this one, part C here. This is the limit x approaching to 2, all right, and the square root. Then the in here, I put the answer here is two. That means if you put the, you know, so this will be just so you take the square roots and then you say the x approaching to two f of x, All right? So that's how do you get it? So limit x approaching to two is a four. All right. So that's why it's two here. All right. Okay. So like I said, the limit law is very intuitively true. You know, it makes sense and it's very easy to understand. Okay, now let's go to our next topic. All right. Okay, so our next topic is how to take care, you know, division by zero. While ago, you know, for the previous problem, we, we know how to do that. So if the numerator is some constants, and the denominator is approaching to zero, then depending on your approaching to zero from the right-hand side, left-hand side. Now I know this situation, we, just, we took care of it from the previous example, is going to go to the infinity or negative infinities, right? So it's going to the, like a, probably it's a vertical asymptote or some function characteristic. How about, uh, you know, we have a different uh, situations here. Okay, so now let's take a look. How do we take care of a division by zero for the different situations? All right, so for the first situation is, uh, how about if you got a zero over zero? Okay, so for the zero over zero situation here, all right? And uh, so we have a few. So here, so we have a zero over zero. So we have a few like the situation we can do, or, you know, we have like the zero over zero. Then also maybe we have a zero minus, uh, we have, uh, you know, the infinity minus, uh, you know, the infinities here. So if we have some constants zero minus some constants, like a 
zeros here, right? So it depends. So this one will become like the infinity minus infinity. Then the, how do we do that? We don't know. Okay, so now let's take a look at the first things here. How do we take care of if you have a zero of zero situation, if you have a divided here? All right, so the first things here, we can take a look. Yes, uh, we, okay, so factor. Okay, so if, okay, so let's take a look for the first skill. We said uh, if uh, both, uh, numerator and uh, denominator can be factored. Okay, so we use our factor skill, can be factors and uh, cancel some trouble term. So if we can cancel, you know, the, you know, if I factor the numerator and the denominator, and then we have, a, we can cancel some trouble terms so we can get rid of the zero over zero situation. Then that probably, you know, will help, right? Okay, so let's take a look at what I mean here. Let's go back to our, worksheets and then let's take a look at what means the factors here all right okay so this is the problem number eight it's here we say evaluate the limit if it does not exist write d and e okay so part a is pretty easy so x approaching to negative two so what is this limit well so x approaching to negative two the so three x will approach into negative six so negative six minus seven is negative 13. Oh, wow, this one is pretty straightforward. There's no, you know, there are no confusions here. All right, let's take a look at the second ones here. This is x squared plus 3x. All right, so first thing is let me plug it in. So if you plug in the negative 3, so this is a negative 3, the square plus 3 times negative 3. Wow, what happened here is 9 minus 9. Whoa, my numerator is 0. Okay, so for the denominator, it's the same thing. I plug the negative three, so it's negative three, the square, minus negative three, minus 12. What happens here is nine plus three minus 12. Wow, it's zero. So I have a zero over zero situation. All right, so now what can I do? So we said, okay, if we have a zero minus zero situation, the first thing is here, let's see if I can factor out uh, something, all right? So let's try the factor methods here. So I'll say, okay, this is limit x approaching to negative three. So this one is pretty easy to factor. I take the x out. So the first term, x plus three. Then the x squared minus x minus 12, I can factor as x minus 4, x plus 3, right? So in here, the x plus 3, x plus 3, both can cancel out. Now, what happens when you plug in the negative 3? So it will be negative 3, and the negative 3 minus negative 4 is negative 7. So you will have a 3, 7. All right, that's what we mean, you factor, and then to see if you can cancel out some trouble term. All right, let's take a look at another one here. Okay, let's do another one. I think this one is a very interesting one. All right, so let's take a look at the i, nine minus x, three minus square root of x. So this one obviously is zero over zero here, right? So we say, okay, in fact, this one, we can have a two way to do it. So the first way is here, let's take a look here. So in here we say, okay, let's try to factor. We say, well, how do I factor this one here? So this is X approaching to nine, right? So this is a three minus the square root of X. And uh, so nine, you can change it to the three to the square. 
Then the x, you can change to the square root of the x to the whole thing squared. So basically, we will use this a squared minus b squared. So what is a squared minus b squared? It's a minus b times a plus b, right? Okay, so now in here, this one here is the limit, x approaching to nine. So this is the three minus the square root of x. So it's a minus b, so it's a three minus the square root of x and the three plus square root of the x here. All right, so we say, oh, that's good. So three minus the square root, these two can cancel. So that's why we will have three plus x. So what is the answers here? This will be three plus the square root of the nine. So it's a six, okay. So what is the other way? So if you say, oh, I cannot, I, I you know, that I cannot, I don't reckon, you know, I don't, I cannot think about this word, nine minus X can change it to here. There's another way. So this will be, uh, you can do like this. So here, this is another way, we say it's nine minus X. So this is a three minus square root of X. This is nine minus X here. So the other skill we can use to handle the zero over zero, is the conjugate. So what do I mean the conjugate? So three minus x square root of x, I can do three plus the square root of x, right? So I can times the three plus the square root of x. So this one's here basically, so this terms here basically is that I multiply once, right? So it's not going to change my function value. So now in here, then we go back here. So this is x approaching to nine. So the new the denominator here right now, this is a minus b times a plus b. So what is here is a squared minus b squared. So it's nine minus x. So here I have nine minus x. Then my numerator I still times the three plus the square root of the x. So here, right? Well, so here now nine and the nine cancel. So this one is give me the same thing see here. So it's a limit x approaching to nine, three plus the square root of the x. So it's a three plus the square root of the nine. So it's a what? It's a six here. So this method here, you know, the times the conjugate, that will be the next skill we're going to cover, you know, in our next lectures here. So. Okay, so now this is our second lecture, and uh, I will stop here. I don't want to make the video too long. So the this problem I will be a good introduction to our next skill, how to deal with the zero. So we're going to multiply the conjugate here. All right, okay, that's it. And looking forward to talk to you in our next lecture. Okay, bye, take care.